in our multiple server scenario, we will imagine that jobs arrive at a single queue. When a server is ready, it takes the first job from the front of the queue. So we have a, some sort of central queue system uh, for managing it. Uh, and we will also say that all servers are identical, uh, such that any job can be served by any server. Uh, and there's nothing really any that different from them. Okay. Um, calculating things like the uh, TQ and W parameters, uh, completion time average and average length of the queue, were easy before. Now they are hard. Um, it's not that it's like, you know, complex. It's not that it's super difficult. It's just, you know, the math isn't as nice and you have to do a little bit more work uh, to actually, you know, do the calculation. Um, nothing that is, you know, outside of your ability to do. Um, no, nothing where, you know, we have to get some, uh, you know, big computational cluster to uh, solve it, or you, you don't need any calculus or anything. It's really just, you know, simple math. Uh, the difficulty, if you will, is that it's you know, slower because there's more steps now. Okay, uh, let's let's face the music. So when we have multiple servers, the um, utilization is then uh, rho is equal to lambda times s divided by n. Again, sanity check, that works. Uh, it makes sense that uh, you know, the arrivals and service are now divided by you know, the number of uh, things we have to do the work. So, all right, yep, yeah, seems, seems reasonable. Uh, and one of the things that will matter is um, we have to do a uh, calculation of an intermediate value k. This intermediate value, capital K, uh, depends on the number of servers that we have. So if we have n servers, uh, then the uh, numerator of this is the sum from 0 to n minus 1, lambda s to the power of i divided by i factorial. Uh, and the denominator is from i equals 0 to n uh, of lambda s to the power of i divided by i factorial. Uh, that means that k is always less than 1 because you know, the, the term on the top is you know, a sum to, well, 1 fewer than then the uh, sum on the bottom, that one goes to 11. Uh, and that is just a numeric value. It has no physical meaning. It has no intrinsic meaning. You know, having a K ratio of, of, that's you know, close to one or a, a bit farther from one or whatever doesn't mean anything on its own. The whole idea of calculating K is that it is notational convenience for making the following formulae less messy. You will need it on a couple of occasions in more than one place, uh, and calculating it one time and saving that value and using it when you need it is nicer than having every formula crapped up by uh, this big summation divided by another summation. So that's why it exists. Don't read anything into it. Okay. Um, so what is the probability that all servers are busy? We didn't calculate uh, what is the probability that a given server is busy uh, before when we had only one, but you can imagine, uh, if you will, that uh, the, the only question on that is if there's anything in the queue ahead of you. But now when we have multiple servers, we can calculate C, the probability that a new job will have to wait in the queue. Uh, and C is one minus K over one minus, and then uh, lambda SK divided by N. Okay, um, so, does this you know, formula work? Sure, you know, it, it does what we need. It tells us that you know, if we have n servers, uh, is it more likely that we will have to wait in the queue? No, in fact, it will be less likely uh, that we have to wait in the queue if we have a lot of servers. Uh, and uh, like I said, the K uh, calculation was done earlier for notational convenience, uh, and it makes your life uh, a little bit better. Uh, in the uh, MMK formulae for the average completion time and the average length of the queue, however, we need this other value, C. C, unlike K, has an intrinsic meaning. It tells you the probability that you have to wait in the queue, and you know, having a lower number there is better, uh, as opposed to you know, a higher number, which would mean busier uh, and it will take longer for it to be your turn. So for TQ, the average time in the queue uh, is, if I break it down into its two components, the amount of time we have to wait plus the service time. And the amount of time that we have to wait is C times uh, the service time uh, divided by K times one minus rho. 
Again, keeping in mind that you know, on the previous slide, we have an updated definition for rho, uh, which says, you know, what is the probability we have to wait multiplied by the service time divided by the number of servers times how busy they are. Uh, and W is the uh, probability we have to wait times rho divided by one minus rho. Uh, and uh, so W in this case, uh, our average length of the queue. Um, is, uh, well, you know, the busier things are, um, the worse our situation gets. The chance we have to wait makes a difference. Uh, if C is zero, nobody has to do any waiting. The length of the queue will also be zero, uh, and that makes sense. Uh, if we are certain that we're going to have to wait, it doesn't mean, you know, the length of... Uh, Length of the queue is infinite, but uh, you know, there is a danger, uh, as uh, you know, it depends what our utilization is. Okay, let's get started. Let's do the example that we've been waiting for this whole time. We have a printer that completes an average print job in two minutes. I don't know, it's printing uh, capstone design project documents. There was a time when you had to print them all. It was expensive. Uh, don't recommend it. Uh, my sympathies to the environment. Um, and if on average every 2.5 minutes a user submits a job to a printer, uh, we can ask how long does it take to get the print job on average? Remember that you know we're talking about averages in both of these cases. So some print jobs are longer and some are shorter, but the average is uh, what's important to us. Uh, we'll also remember uh, at this point that uh, we need to check that the system is not overloaded because if it's overloaded, you know we're doomed from the start. Uh, and we can see that that's not the case here because you know, if a job is submitted every 2.5 minutes on average and we complete them in two minutes on average, we can keep up with the jobs being submitted. So we're okay. A single printer, now there's only one printer in this scenario, so our system is MM1. Service time is S, two minutes, or 120 seconds, if you prefer to think in, uh, in seconds instead. Uh, and arrival rate, lambda, is one divided by 2.5. One job arrives every 2.5 minutes, so that's 0 0.4. We're keeping everything in minute units here. Um, it doesn't matter all that much what units you use. They could be seconds, minutes, milliseconds, whatever makes sense. Uh, but the calculation on the slide does everything in minutes. Uh, and so we calculate utilization. It is lambda times s, 0 0.4 times 2, which is 0 0.8. That makes sense. If a job is being submitted every 2.5 minutes and the average job takes two minutes, that's 80% uh, of the time uh, between submissions uh, on average. So yeah, 80% utilization seems right. Uh, and TQ is S divided by one minus rho, which is two divided by one minus 0 0.8 or two divided by 0 0.2 for a whopping figure of 10. So on average, it takes 10 minutes to get your print job of which keep in mind some of it is the time that is taken to print yours, but still, ouch, that's a fair amount of waiting. Uh, I don't know if I wanna wait that long for the thing that I am printing to get done. It would be nice if it could be done faster, especially if you are running up against a deadline of some sort, right? 10 minutes seems like a long wait until you have you know, the warm paper in your hands and you can say, aha, now I need to sprint to the Dropbox uh, to uh, throw it in. Don't forget to staple. Uh, all right, um, we're going to use the predictive power of queuing theory. Um, everybody hates printers, by the way. That's uh, a universal thing. And uh, I understand there are like holiday sweaters available now that say, no, I don't fix printers, um, which, you know, I've probably needed in my life. Um, anyway, so if uh, you can convince management, and maybe management in this case is like, you know, EC department staff, uh, that a 10 minute wait for a print job is unreasonable. So we've been asked to uh, do an analysis and make a decision. Should we, number one, buy a second printer that is of the same speed? Uh, or number two, can we sell the old printer and combine that money with the uh, funding that the department is gonna kick in and buy a printer that is double the speed? Think for a minute about sort of what your intuition tells you. Should we buy a second printer at the same speed or sell the old one? and get one that is double the speed. All right, let's do the math. 
new calculation. So now, uh, because this printer we said is double the speed, the service time is 1.0, so one minute. Uh, and Lambda is still 0 0.4, one job every two and a half minutes on average. Um, so rerunning our TQ calculation, uh, we end up with S divided by one minus rho is now equal to one divided by 0 0.6 or 1.67. Uh, putting that in minutes terms, that makes it one minute and 40 seconds which as you might imagine is a lot less time than 10 minutes. Okay, that's a huge improvement. That sounds pretty good. Is it the best option though? We have to do the other one. Okay, the two printer solution is more complicated because as we saw already, there's more steps involved in the math. So the first thing to do is calculate the intermediate value K. I reproduce the formula on the left and expand it here on the right before giving you the uh, actual value reported to six decimal places uh, on the far right. Uh, and on the top, it's because this is you know, a two printer system. So it would be MMK where K equals two. On the top, we do the zero and one calculation. And on the bottom, we do the zero, one and two calculations. Uh, and I will assume that you trust me at this point uh, enough that uh, you don't have to double check my math, although you can. Uh, if it's wrong, uh, we can certainly correct it. Okay. So we calculated the intermediate value for K, which again, it's just a, a ratio. It doesn't tell us anything individually. Plug that into the formula for C. I will spare you the individual calculation. You get 0 0.22857 and TQ is 2.57 uh, using the formulae above. Okay, so before it was 1.67 minutes for the single printer solution, and now for the two printer solution, it's 2.57 minutes. All right, um, two observations uh, jump out at us. Uh, we doubled the number of printers, um, but now jobs are completed almost four times faster, right? They're done in like two and a half minutes instead of 10 minutes. Um, but actually, the single fast printer was actually better if utilization is low. Uh, if we're not using the, uh, the printers uh, as much, getting your single job out faster is better. Like, why does that make sense? Well, if nobody ever prints anything, you're the only person who's ever printing anything, you never have to wait. Uh, the slow printer takes two minutes and the fast printer takes one minute to print your print job. So you want that. That's good. It is helpful. Uh, in fact, um, that's an important condition if utilization is low. Maybe at some point, um, will two printers be a better choice than the single fast one? Uh, you know, is, is this you know the break even point? You may remember we talked about a thing earlier where we said, well, if you have a single fast server, it can be used to simulate n slow ones if jobs are preemptible. That is, you can stop working on one, put it aside for a minute, and then come back to it later uh, without any issue. That's not the case with printing. You can't stop halfway down printing my page and print somebody else's page and then go back to printing mine later. So print jobs are an example of something that's not preemptible in that sense. You could you know, start them in a different order. Somebody's late arriving print order could have a higher priority and go first or something like that. So you could have that kind of preemption, but not the you know, interrupt and come back to it kind. Um, so at what point will the two printers be a better choice than the single fast one? If you rerun the math with 100% load for you know, both situations, does it, uh, does an answer become clear? One of the things to keep in mind uh, is that job size variability uh, will matter a lot uh, in your decision. Uh, if uh, some jobs take a very, very long time and others are very fast, then having two printers might be better uh, because uh, you can have one printer that's tied up by the very slow job and then all the, other, uh, all the other print jobs go through quickly. So the total time savings for all the people who just you know, got their print job and left and only need to print this one page uh, and that's it. Uh, really benefit from having that second server. Uh, if we don't have significant variability, as is the case here, doesn't matter very much.